All right, awesome. So thank you for joining me today. I'm gonna walk through just the data form system. I'm gonna show you some of the tricks that we do to create you know, multi-step forms. I'm gonna walk through some of the challenges you may have embedding you know, these forms on external websites and using our pixel. Uh, I'm gonna show you our, our Git parameter system, which you know, a lot of people don't leverage and leveraging that for multi-step forms is you know, part of that process. Um, I'm also going to kind of break down some of the tricks that I do to style a form within this inside the system. And then also just some of the things that you want to integrate. I know, uh, you know, several have asked as far as like the Facebook pixel on conversions or even Google conversions. And also you'll notice that there's a section that we actually track paid and how you're able to trigger that um, not only on a traffic standpoint, but also on a lead conversion standpoint, as far as like the campaign ID, you know, the source where it came from, you know, industry ad group ID, you know, your creative things like that. So um, I'm going to try to kind of keep it to that. Um, one of the things on these multi step forms, the examples I'm going to do is inside an actual funnel within our platform. So I haven't yet provided a workaround for multi step forms when you embed them onto your own site. Uh, you certainly can do that. Uh, it's just there's a there's a little bit of a uh, more advanced way of doing it if you want to hide, such as you know the first name, last name, email that they provide on step one. Uh, I'll, I'll speak to that later on. So that at the very beginning, I'm going to go through just kind of setting up a landing page, simple landing page uh, using the Bootstrap theme, and you know setting up the thank you page or the step two page and the thank you page and and some of the things that you can do. Uh, with just tracking the data that's submitted in a form. So let me share my screen here. And like always, when I'm done with this, uh, obviously, if you have any questions outside of, you know, what I'm showing you today, happy to stay on and answer those questions about the system. And hopefully we can learn a few things today. Uh, let me go ahead and share. Okay, cool. So. Hopefully you can see my screen. Um, right now I'm gonna actually go and just set up a data form first. So I'm gonna come over here to templates. Make sure y'all know this. Um, click on data forms. And I'm gonna set up my first data form and this is gonna be step one. So, you know, a lot of the forms that we do, we wanna collect first name, last name, email, phone, you know, as far as the first form entry. And then of course we wanna track that submission throughout. One of the cool things I like about doing it this way, even though this is not like a traditional multi-step form builder, I know many want you know a drag and drop system for for building forms in the works. Hopefully, we'll have something you know more intuitive as far as building a data form. But to get the same, I would say, flow as a survey or or just anything on a multi-step um, process. What I do like about doing it this way, because our leads merge, meaning. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, um, you know, if you have the same email address in the same workspace, so this only works inside the same workspace or no workspace, we use the email as the matcher. So it, no other field will merge or match or anything like that. It's only run off of email. And, and so if you've, you know, done an import into our system and, you know, the data wasn't exact, wasn't mapping the way you wanted it and you redid it. As long as that email field was mapping originally, those leads will merge and update all the data that comes in. I know there's been some suggestions to append additional data instead of replacing data if you've used this. And so that's definitely something we're adding in. But you know what I do like about this the flow of how I do this is a little bit more of a setup, but you're able to track that progression. So for instance, if you have a real short form on your lander, you know, whether, whether it be just first name and email address and taking them to the next stage, you know, you're able to track that progression because it's gonna append and not only that, include that data form. And then additionally, you can run automation, you know, work, a workflow based on that second step data form if they go in or if they, you know, have the first data form that they come in uh, and then also filtering in your lead view, you know, filtering ones that are only in that data form, you know, obviously you can do some more actions with it. So at least on the lead view, you're able to see the different forms that they filled out, even though the way we're building it is essentially one multi-step 
process. And so how our data form process works is that each of those steps that you want to do would be its own data form, um, opposed to like some other systems where you set up a multi-step, you may have, you know, just, I know I've seen a lot of them, but you may just tag this grouping of questions as being on the second section. I don't know how they track the progression or save that data, but at any rate, I'm going to go ahead and create my first data form and we'll just do step one. I'm not going to do a workspace here and I'm going to hit create. I'm going to go in and set up my four fields. First name. Set it. Might as well make them required. And I'll use some styling examples if you're not going to show the label, depending on your theme, last name. Um, by the way, I, I hear, I'm sure anybody who set these data forms up complain about this. Oh, oh by the way, I need to do the map too. Even though they're the same name, I, I definitely like to do the lap, not, oh, excuse me, uh, map two. So why we have it like this, uh, it's annoying. It's just one of those things we got to get to to every section of the platform just to make it easier. It's where you have to, you only have these options when creating it. So then you have to go in and do that. I know that's annoying, especially if you have a ton of fields. So definitely need to add all the options here so you can just quickly build out opposed to uh, doing it the way I'm doing it. All right. Oops, you know what? So you don't have to do text input. I mean, email type. I always do email type. There's a couple of things that we do for spam checking. Uh, you may not be aware of this, but if you use the preset email address, we do an extra lookup to ensure that that's an actual email address. If not, uh, we flag it with a spam point system. And so that spam points will, you know, ultimately determine whether we're going to allow this lead to come through or if we're going to ghost it. Um, I think our spam point system it has to be over 100. So there's a lot of different things. We have a lot of, you know, people ask about the honeypot. We have that uh, built in. We also have a clean talk that basically checks blacklist of email addresses and IP addresses. We also have, you know, a growing repository of of terms and things like that, obviously that you don't that flag spam such as Bitcoin and you know um, sexual keywords and things like that, right? So in at some point, there's a lot of leads that are being submitted to your forms today that you actually never see is because we ghost them. But one of the things that I always do is use that email type simply because we have extra checks opposed to just using the text field. Uh, so I use email address, uh, email type. Just grab this. And again, you don't shouldn't have to map to if they're exact same name as our fields, but I always do it out of. And I'm just gonna add phone number. Just have phone, just input, create. Oh, oh, another thing on this. So we do have a preset phone field. I don't like it. Uh, I need to rework it. Um, mainly because it doesn't allow for extensions or dashes or spaces or, you know, the different formats that people put in on your form. So you'll notice if you use the phone number type and you're trying to submit, you're getting an error. Uh, the reason why is because the match is not all numbers, not all numeric uh, numbers. Now, there is an option in there to say, you know, only numeric, but it's still if they have a space or just, the, you know, there's more logic that needs to be put into that. I just always use a text uh, field option for phone. So I'm going to go ahead and do required, and I'm going to map to this real quick. Okay. So now I'm going to start with just building out the funnel. Um, there's a couple of things we got to come back in here to do to ultimately get to the next step. And, and I'll show you that and everything on from that side. But let me go ahead and just build out the first landing page uh, for this. So I'm just going to use Bootstrap. Let's go. Yeah, form example, no workspace. Okay, so let me go ahead and let me just delete all this real quick. All right, so I want to kind of start from scratch here. So I'm going to bring your container over bring 
one column. Let me try to do, actually, you know what? I'm going to get rid of that. Let me do a two column one. Okay. And so I'll just, this is just going to be simple. It's not going to be anything. I mean, of course, I could spend some time like going through here. Step one. And then my column over here, I am going to drag over a data form. All right. Okay. So obviously this is not the data form that I built. This is just a sample data form. So when you drag over a data form in any place that you want to drag over, if you just hover right over, not here, but you'll see it, you'll see data forms right here. So remember our system is a layer built, um, you know, platform. And so here, you know, you're just going to have to kind of get to the surrounding area. There's a little padding there. So no matter where you drag it in, it's pretty easy to get to, but you got to make sure you're on that layer. And if you are, you can click on the settings side and you'll see your data form option over here. So I can come over here and grab that step one. Uh, and you'll notice I don't have the submit. So let me go ahead and save this and come back over here and uh, submit step one. Okay. And I, you know, I'm gonna look over on chat just in case you're asking any questions related to the steps I'm going through. So check email before submitting the form. Yep. So that's exactly right. And then will it check the phone number the same way? Not yet. So there is a new functionality that I'm adding, which is going to be cool, which is going to work. You're going to want to use that phone type uh, because what we're actually going to do for any of those on phone type, we're going to check that the phone number is a landline or a mobile. And I have a new new multiple fields for cell phone, alternate, alternate phone, which we already have. Uh, and then that way, when you send out SMS, it'll actually use the mobile if, if it exists. If not, it'll use the regular phone. So we are going to check phone lines. We're also going to check the country phone line and things like that, um, you know, for that field. So that's definitely coming, which will also help with spam because obviously if they throw some kind of random number in there, uh, you know, that's that's not going to work. And we could also um, do other checks based on, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of possibilities with it because we get a lot of data back from what type of phone line it is. Uh, so there's a lot of different combinations we can do with spam. So, okay. So I have my step one. And again, you know, there's, you can style this obviously however you want, um, you know, make this kind of centered and whatever. Um, I won't go through like building out a landing page because I'll waste too much time trying to make everything look pretty, but um, you get the kind of the idea of, of where you're looking, right? So whatever kind of, landing page you have or whatever you've built in the system, drag your data form over, select this, go ahead and grab this and change out your data form. Now we have step one. Uh, let me add a domain to this so we can go ahead and test a few things. Uh, what is this count? This count has a domain, I believe. Uh, by the way, I know I said this on other trainings, but if you have, um, if you have a domain on the system, and you're trying to use it outside of your parent account. Uh, in this case, I think this domain is already used. So you're seeing a domain that will not allow me to use. Oh, no, my microphone is in the way. Okay, so this one is on our system. So if you have a domain that you've added to your system, it's only available within your parent and child accounts of that account. So if you've, you know, if you're creating you know, a site in your master account and you're sharing it, you know, if you're using the theme engine or whatever, and you moved it over into another parent account and you had originally put that domain in parent, your main account or another parent account, and you're trying to use it in another parent account, you can't. Uh, that's for protection. You know, obviously you don't want somebody, you know, taking your domain and using it in another system or another account uh, freely, uh, adding pages and things like that, and trying to take advantage of your domain. So you won't be able to use this domain if it's already set up in a parent account. Um, in this case, this is one I have set up here. So let me go out to this page here. Okay. So step one, obviously, if I submit this, you'll get that little pre-prompt that comes up and says, you know, thank you for your message. So there's a couple ways that you would want to redirect this page. One, if you're in here inside your data form, you have a success URL. You can move this success URL uh, to anywhere, right? You put the full URL in to another site. Obviously, that redirects to it. 
or you can submit it to an internal page. When you submit it to an internal page, you're going to want to make it relative path. And so relative path is basically, um, you know, forward slash page name forward slash, right? And so that will redirect to page name. Of course, we've got to set up our page and what it's actually going to be. This is just an example. If you do it like this, right, without the forward slash there, what that's doing is it's going to redirect to that page of the current page you're on. So works fine here if you're at the root of the domain. But if you were like at anything right here and you were to submit, and this page is not a nav group or built in our system with that navigation to be here, then you'll get a 404 error that that page doesn't exist. So it's very important if you're using our internal, make sure that the page is the entire thing that's after your domain. So everything after here. So if I wanted to go to anything, I would grab that. If it was anything plus this, I would want to grab all of that. That's what I want to redirect to. Uh, just because it's using all root, you know, the root domain for it to build your URL and the redirect. Uh, and if you don't include the forward slash here, it'll just append it to the existing folder or existing uh, page that you're on. And that may not be where you want to go, especially if it's in another page that they're submitting the form. So just make sure it's like that if you're, um, you know, just the full absolute URL minus the domain. Now you can put the domain in there for sure. You can put your whole domain in there and, and that's not a problem at all. Uh, but I, I do like the relative or the absolute pass without the domain in, uh, just cleaner for me, but you could just grab this whole URL if you wanted and throw that in there here, right? And, and do it that way. Okay, so now that we have our step one page here and step one form, you want basically to go to the next step. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a second form. So actually, let me explain this. We have what is called uh, get variables. Um, these get variables can be used in so many different ways. Not only does it create a session, but meaning you don't have, once you set this get variable, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me just kind of explain it real quick. Basically after a URL, if I do that, you'll see URLs like this where it's a question mark and it's just like anything equals one, two, three. Right. This is used not only in our application, this is used on your Facebook campaigns. You know, when you click on Google and it goes into your site, you know, those variables that are being passed over, they're they're there. So you, you know, if you do any development to grab and use to do something else with. And, you know, primarily before we came out with this get variable system, you would have to use JavaScript to pull out if you're gonna use it on our form or on our builder or whatever, you do use JavaScript to look for this in the URL and then get the value and then do something with that value. It's obviously difficult to explain if you're not an advanced user, but with our get variable system, the way it works is anything here. So I can have, let's just say type equals five, six, seven. I can do so it's the ampersand right here and whatever you want, it could be anything. Right. And then after equals is the value. So, you know, roofing, whatever. Obviously, it's not doing anything because I'm I don't have any in, anything in here to grab these get variables. The way our system works to make it really easy for you to use this logic, anything like, for instance, um, I'm going to share this after this call. But there's this ain't a real live URL, but you'll see like this is what you would put in your Google ad campaign. And there's a tracking section for your pro attributes inside Google AdWords, if you're familiar with that. And this is what you would append your landing page URL with source equals Google ads. This could be whatever you want, campaign ID. And so there's all these little attributes here, right? The variables that you can use uh, to track. Um, and our system actually tracks by default, by the way, if you just throw this into your ad campaign and then fill this out, uh, it'll track automatically with the lead and also in your paid section. But it's the same concept. Anything that is after the question mark and then your variable equals, and, and you can build this out as many as you want. What we have is a get variable tag. And so in my builder here, I can put, um, just for simple, so it's, it's curly brackets, two of them, get 
G-E-T, lowercase, dot, whatever this name is up here. So in this case, this is anything. I'm going to type in dot anything. And I'm going to close out my curly brackets. Let me just go ahead and save that. And you'll see, <clears throat> excuse me, when I hit refresh, one, two, three is printing there. And right, if I were to change that to type, I can go ahead and save that. Now it's gonna, it should print five, six, seven, eight, right? So I'm using this Git variable. What's also really cool about this, this sets a session. So I can use this freely anywhere I want throughout the site now. There's also another option where you can do in redirect equals one, and that'll automatically redirect you. Um, I'm gonna build a little documentation after this call. I know I say this every single time. Um, unfortunately, with my <laughs> with my life, things get crazy, especially when I go um, zero dark 30 on these calls, but I will build the documentation for you so you know you can see that and redirect. Why you would use that is if you don't want them to see all the stuff that's actually in the URL and you just wanna redirect it um, and create the session so you can use it freely. The reason why I'm explaining all this stuff is the um, the way we're gonna use this, oops, keep doing the dang redirect. Hold on real quick. The way we're gonna use this is part of our multi-step form process. So as I mentioned, you have this get type here. That again, type is simply just type here um, in the get variable. So now that I've kind of explained that, what I'm gonna do now is set up my second form. So one of the things on the redirect on the first form, obviously we wanna redirect to another page. Actually, let's just start there. I'm gonna create another page. I'm gonna call this new page just uh, step two. Make this one blank and create page. Okay, so I'm gonna add a form here, uh, here in just a second. And before I add that form, let me explain the redirects that happen on your data forms. So on your data forms here on success URL, I have, again, step one, or did I call it step two? What am I doing here? Page, yeah, step two. So step two would be just like this, right? Because if I were to go to step two on this page, it would look like this, where our URLs work, step two. It's blank, obviously, because I haven't put anything in here, but that's the URL. So I can grab this whole thing, or I can just put in step two. Now, the way our system works, um, if you use the tag system for your emails, I know we have all these tags, and I need to do a better job of explaining these tags, but the data forms, first name, last name, email address, phone, if you want to use those in your email, right, um, it's just curly bracket, two of them, first name spelled exactly like this with closed curly bracket. So now we want to kind of build our URL here because I don't want to have to ask these four questions again on my second step. So when I redirect, I want to send that data into my URL so I can grab it and use it as part of my form. So the way you're going to do that is all you have to do is add question mark. And in this case, I don't, you're going to want it as simple as possible as far as your get variable names. You don't want to put, you know, first name and, and you can, but you're going to want it to be all lowercase underscores for spaces if you're going to use spaces and just simplify it. But of course, you're going to want to know what you've done here. So I'm going to do first, this F name, right? Now I want to print the data that's submitted from the form. Right, so in this case, first name, if I submit it, I want first name, whatever they submit on first name to be this value here. So I'm gonna do curly bracket, I'm gonna do first name, just like you would in the email, the same thing. So first name, then and, and I'm gonna put L name, and same thing, curly bracket. Oops, what am I doing? Last name, and I'm gonna do and again, and I'm gonna do, Email, so I'm just gonna do E M equals again. This is custom. This is whatever you want to put in here. This is only for you. And this is what we're gonna use with the get tag with this value here. This value is the value that we use to grab from the lead submission. 
right? So it has to be exactly the way you've set this up. If these were, you know, again, any of these fields, industry, whatever, whatever the name is, it's case sensitive. It has to match exactly. This also works for, um, you know, I'll talk about custom fields and custom lead fields to kind of wrap this up of how you can pass data into your, you know, your lead, your custom lead fields um, and matching those. And so I got email and then I'm going to do just phone equals again, curly bracket. Um, close curly bracket. Okay. So that's my whole URL there, right? So I wanted to go to step two, forward slash step underscore dash two, forward slash question mark, F name. Now, again, this, depending on if you've ever done this, this, my, this may look confusing, but this is pretty much how all URLs are passing data over, you know, even from an ad campaign from Facebook or, or Google. Same concept. And the only difference is we're passing the data that's submitted on this form here, first name, last name, email address, phone. We're passing that over in this format. So question mark F name equals our internal tag for the data form, you know, and last name. Again, this is just made by me. Um, you know, you would come up with your own custom. So now I have that set. And if I were to submit this form, that will redirect to the second page. As a matter of fact, let me just go ahead and do that real quick. Now that we're here, you'll see how it progresses. So John, just do John at uh, com and all right so if i submit this this is going to take me to step two which is blank because i haven't built out that page but you'll see you know it's putting the value john last name aguilar my email address my phone number and it also adds a pid so this pid is actually the id that's associated with that lead uh, so if you're using the API, there's a lot of cool things you can do with that, you know, pass that variable over. Um, you can use it, you can create a little JavaScript, uh, JSON, whatever, um, I'm sorry, uh, Ajax request to the API, <laughs> send that back and do something with your site, redirect them somewhere else, populate the data, build your own kind of workflow, whatever you want to do. Uh, the PID is actually the ID of the lead uh, that's submitted in the system. And so you could certainly um, leverage that as well. So now, okay, I have my data, it's submitted. So if I were to go into my lead form or my leads, I see my lead, all right, checking 555. So if I go into it, you know, I got my email, my phone number, these are the fields that I filled out, you know, all that stuff. So step one's here, which again, cool. If you haven't seen this, if you're not using our internal funnels uh, or if you're not using our embed, forms or our pixel, you know, if you have the pixel installed, which I need to explain some troubles that you have with your pixel in this call as well, this is super cool because it tracks. And if you haven't seen this view, I love this view as far as like seeing what someone's done on your website. And what's great is it's, you know, I submitted at this time, but it's tracking me before that. So it creates a fingerprint and then it matches you to that lead after they submit. So you get to see all the stuff they did before they submit it. And then obviously, if you're using our, our sales feed or our uh, workflows for triggering stuff when they come back to your site, obviously, that's all dependent on, you know, having this set up properly. So, okay, so step two. So again, we're here, all this data is here. So now I want to build out my second step uh, form. And so let me just go ahead and go into this. Let me grab a, a container. Um, you know, I'm just going to do one container here, and then I'm going to drag over a data form, which we haven't built yet, but just for a placeholder right now, throw this data form in here, and we're going to call this step two. Okay, and for now, I'll just switch it out with step one. I'll change this out in just a second. Okay, so now I have my page. Of course, if I come to it and I hit refresh, there it is, step two. These are not the fields that we want for step two. So now we need to start building out our step two data form. So I'm going to come over here into data forms, and I'm going to create step two. All right. So first and foremost, the annoying part about this, actually, there's a couple of easier way. I guess you could clone it and do that, but I'll just do this for me step. So you're going the first step is we need all these fields from step one 
to be in my data form for step two. And of course, we don't want them to show up for the user. So we want them to be invisible, right? We don't want them to be visible for them to actually see that. So we are going to use a field type called hidden. So we're going to make it the same first name. And we're going to choose hidden. All right, we're going to hit create. So then I'm going to go into hidden. And I'm going to map to first name. Because obviously that's there. Remember, because you're progressing, as long as the email matches, uh, this data will flow over and, and obviously stay the same. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab our get parameter that we set up, that F name, right? So that F name is what we've, is a custom name, right? It can be whatever we want. And I'm going to put that tag, get dot first name in here. And so you'll see now, um, actually why we build this out. Let me grab, I'm so used to using the, this is actually phased out. This is, you can put this anywhere inside your code and then it'll actually embed. So you don't have to use a data selector in here in the builder. But I'm gonna go ahead and use the builder uh, for that. So I'm gonna grab that settings. Oh, I gotta hit refresh because it needs to reload my data forms. And I'm gonna swap out this data form real quick to step two and hit save. Obviously there's nothing there because I have a hidden field type and I don't have a data form. Step two. Okay. So now that I have that, you'll see step two is blank. Well, because I haven't added any new questions yet. But if you right click here and inspect element, you'll see that hidden field that's going to submit. You know, you don't need to worry about this if you know this is over your head. Um, just note that because you create a hidden field, when you submit this lead it's gonna pass over the name and the value of it because the value is up here and the value is in here on your variable or your value here, right? Your get variable your, the, for the get tag, right? So hopefully this doesn't sound too confusing, but it's, it's actually really, really simple when you come in here and actually you know, kind of set this up. So now we're gonna do last name. So I'm gonna do last name. Once you get over the redirect format, you know, the question mark, your custom get variable name equals, and then using our internal tag for first name or whatever the you know field name you want to pass over. Uh, it's, it's actually really, really easy. Um, last name. So I'm going to go in here for last name. I'm going to map that to last name, and I'm going to come back out here to my L name. And, oh, what am I doing? See, just do stupid things. Uh, it needs to be a hidden field, right? So we want to add last name as a hidden field and hit create. Now I'm going to put my value as git dot L name. Now I'm going to map that to last name. Okay. And still we don't have anything showing up on our form because these are all hidden. Now I'm going to do email. Now email is important, right? Because without the email mapping to email, um, it's not going to, you know, merge these leads, right? So you'll see each data form, the progression that they submit on each form, provided the email is exactly the same, which the email will be exactly the same because you're passing over what they submit and it's hidden. Uh, but it's important to map that to email just to ensure, because this is an email field, there's a hidden field. So you got to make sure that it's mapped to on email. Okay, so the last one is what phone? phone and hidden create phone get dot phone curly close curly brackets i'm going to map that to phone okay so now i have that set if i hit refresh here and inspect element you'll see all my hidden fields here matter of fact i know everyone complains about this so let me just make this super big i don't think that's increasing the size here that you can see this but you know the, all these little hidden inputs they're just hidden fields that's going to submit uh with your form as you go through just right here so i got john aguilar john at checking 555.com and the value so now i have those fields now i want to add in the ability to oh uh so i'm now i'm seeing some questions here so let me just go back here before i go any further Okay, 
Sorry about that. Once you program the phone fields with the spam checks, when we import numbers, we'll show the numbers in the mobile land field. Yep, that's feature functionality is going to be part of that. It's all really part of the import process is why we're using it specifically for obviously SMS uh, and voicemail drops too, right? You have a higher deliverable rate on voicemail drops when they're mobile. Um, Javier, good to see you. Okay, once you program, that's the same question. Uh, would you consider breaking forms up uh, using a loop system so you could put, yeah, so I need to do that. That's next on the list, Stephen. Uh, that way you can style them even better uh, and make it look however you want. I'll show you how I style them and how, you, you know, it's pretty easy, especially if you look through, if you, I'm sorry, it's pretty easy if you know CSS uh, and you know how to alter that. It's not easy uh, to make them look like your theme. If you're importing a theme, if you don't know CSS, but you know, I always say this, if you're importing a theme, you should at least know some HTML and CSS. Uh, pagination issue, yes, um, I need to work on that. I, I did find the issue earlier this week on, on that, and I'll, I'll address that uh, this week. You for sure will have an update on that. Okay, my use case is that I wanna set up a funnel where people add various products and subscriptions in a funnel and check out at the end using Stripe. All products are held within Stripe. Is there more focus on tracking? Is this more focused on tracking? So Kyle, yeah, so you can do that. Um, you know, if you want to create a funnel, even one up sales that you want to do with Stripe payment, you know, the payment link, you can do that. Or if you're going to build your products inside here uh, in the billing subscription center and use those product links inside the system. That's where this get parameters may be helpful based on how you pass over your, you know, what they fill out. Uh, there's other, the second phase of this training is actually using the if then logic with the get parameters. Uh, that way you could actually do some conditional logic within your funnel. Uh, so I'll, that's definitely going to be my next training because, you know, even Stephen has mentioned how um, underutilized that functionality is. This is a test of this, uh, I guess, the beginning of that as far as how to leverage that. But yeah, um, most certainly can show you how we do that on the next training. But yeah, this is more of, Multi-step forms, a little more information about how to use data forms, embedding data forms on external websites, some of the issues you have with our pixels uh, and those types of things. Okay, you could use HTMX and it'll look seamless. Absolutely could for sure. Uh, so how do you hide all the tag info and pass between steps? So I just covered that. Uh, hopefully that was clear. I just saw I'm clear the info on step one still submits into the CRM even if they don't finish step two. That is absolutely correct. I see. I would say the um, most attractive piece of doing it this way, uh, even though it, it seems cumbersome to, to kind of set up multiple data forms and, and kind of configure it this way. Uh, but I love that. I love seeing the progression uh, and, and being able to filter based on that progression on the on lead view based on the, you know, obviously filtering by data form. Uh, could you use this to let people edit their contact info? So yeah, you could absolutely do that. So you don't have to use a hidden field. So you could recreate all these fields. Again, you could clone. So, you know, if you're in here and you wanted to clone your, your data form, you could clone this. So you start with all those fields. And then inside, uh, as far as like the placeholder, you could put that tag there. So that placeholder will show up there uh, and then they'll see what they put in their data uh, and then set the value there. So you could absolutely do it that way if you wanted to. Uh, in this case, we're just going to hide all these, and then I'll go to step two. And, you know, if we're going to do like a survey, let's say, um, you know, uh, I can't even think. Um, let's just say, how was our service? And I will do a multi-checkbox. No, that wouldn't be a multi-checkbox. It would be one or two. So how about we do services you're interested in? Okay, so I'm gonna hit create. So of course, this is gonna show up. Now it's form number two, and I'm gonna put, you know, uh, marketing, sales, VA. Okay, so here on step two now, I'm seeing my options here, here right? So if I'm gonna do a survey for step two, I could have, you know, five or six different options here that I'm going to use and then do step three, you know, progress to step three. So 
Now, what would I have to do on step three? I would have to clone that data form, obviously switch out my options here, but I would start from there because they would already have the parameters I'm using to pass over. So in step two, I would want to pass over to step three, the same thing that I did on step one. So I'd come over here to step one and I would just grab, so I'd clone step two. So step one, it, it won't take long. Matter of fact, let me just set up a step three. I'll go ahead and do that. Um, that way I'm not trailing off here. So on step two, I have my question, service you're interested in, and then submit step two, right? So what's gonna happen now, if I hit refresh, well, before I do that, I'm gonna set up step three, how about that? Okay, so now I'm gonna set up step three. I'm gonna clone step two, call this step three. And the reason why I'm cloning it is because I've already set up all those hidden fields for what I'm capturing from the first step. So I don't wanna have to go set all those up again. So I'm gonna clone here. And so now on step three, I have all my hidden fields, but to get those hidden fields, the variables to pass over on step two, I need to do the same thing I did on step one. So I'm just gonna copy this and I'm gonna go into step two and I'm going to submit that there, but I'm going to change out, to take me to step three. All right, so now I have step three and now I'm gonna go out to my builder and I'm just going to create a new page. I'm gonna clone step one, three, create page. Of course, I'm gonna change this out, be step three, and I'm gonna change out my data form to be step three, All right? Um, and so I'm gonna save this. Of course, it still says submit step two because my step three data form was a clone and I have an alter to that yet. So I do submit step three, and then I'm gonna change out my question. And I'm gonna say, um, uh, sales rep, I don't know. You get, you get the point here. Jack, Jill. Um, okay. If I were to set up a custom field, so a lot of people have asked the map to, like these are all our global fields, right? So these are ones that we just pre-built in the system that are there. But you may have set up some custom data fields for your leads. The map to is unnecessary. Is All you have to do is make sure that you create your custom field. So if you're not familiar with that, I know I'm kind of turning it off and I'll only talk a little bit about this, but under data, data fields, you can create custom data fields. These are gonna show up in the lead view. You can edit these fields and you would just name it. You would select um, leads. You would select the type, text input, and whatever name is important here. So if I wanted a custom field called sales rep, I would name it case sensitive exactly what it is. So now I have that mapped. That's how you map custom fields. As long as the name is exactly the same, and you built that field as a custom field, when you submit that lead, it will also map to the custom field that you've set up. Um, so that's just a little heads up on how you can do custom fields uh, to map to. Because you may want to collect this data here and have it editable um, data to where when you're on the call, you know, if you need to change the data, you can oppose it to just being in the data field section, uh, which we'll see in just a second. Okay, so now I have my step three, my step three here should have changed. And of course, my step two is going to take me to step three. So now, just make sure I'm all set here. I'm going to say I'm interested in all of these. And I'm going to hit submit step two. That's going to take me to step three. And once again, if I go in here to the code, you'll see it passed all that over there. More importantly, if I go over to my lead view, You'll see I don't have two, originally it came in as step one, but I don't have two submissions, I only have one here, right? So if I were to filter step two, I'm in step two. I'm also in step one, right? So I'm in both of these, even my original came in through step one, so that's what your original data form that you're assigned to, 
but I'm also associated with step two because I'm in there. And if I were to go into my lead form, you'll see that I submitted step one at 11.29 a.m. And then I submitted step two at 11.46 a.m. So you see how it's progressing in your timeline of, of where you're going, plus all that new data comes in here. So now my data form details is growing. Originally it was just this, now it's that, right? So let me step and just go over here to chat, make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. Um, okay, cool. The, the only strictly required field to be passed through the URL as a parameter in a multi-step form is the email, right? If I don't want to show the name in the step two, I can skip. Oh yeah, great point. I mean, that's a heck of a point. You don't really need to create any of all the other fields that you want. Or, or, I don't even think about that. Thank you for pointing that out. You only need to pass the email over if you want it to match. They've already submitted first name, last name, phone number, all the stuff you did on step one. You only need to pass over step two, the email. That way you can match that lead. Uh, that is a great point. Uh, and I hope everyone understood that because that's exactly um, probably the easiest way of doing this without having to create all those. I didn't even think about that. That's awesome. Uh, exactly right. You just pass over email. And, and also, if you don't want the email to kind of show up in the URL, you can just do the and symbol with uh, R. And again, I'm, I promise I'm going to send this out, but it's R-E-D-I-R -E equals one. If you do that, that'll redirect the same page that they're on and remove everything from the URL. Um, that way, it's, it's again, just completely, um, you know, where they don't see it in the URL. So great point. That's all you have to do is pass over the email. That's the only way, only thing that matches. So in this case, now I want to do like a thank you page. So if I come over here to, I'm going to create a new page, just do blank, say thank you, hit create page. And I'm just going to drag over a container and just do one column. So in this case, so you may want to pass it over to personalize it, right? So I may want to do uh, thanks, get, F name, really appreciate you. Oh, you know, like buy something else, right? So this is how you can actually leverage this one up kind of flow if you want to do it that way uh, through here. The next training, we actually have the ability to you could create like multiple content blocks and based on what they filled out on the parameter, we'll only show the one that you wanna show. Uh, that's a little more advanced and I'm gonna make it easier for everyone to use it, uh, but it's it's actually pretty kick-ass uh, once you get the hang of it. So this is obviously stupid. You are not gonna design it this way, but uh, now I'm gonna come over here to step three and make sure that it's going to that thank you page. All right, and I'm going to come over here to step three and hit refresh just to make sure I got everything good. And I want Jack and I'm going to hit submit. So this is going to take me to my thank you page. And because this is what's beautiful about this, you see, I didn't put any of the parameters in the URL, but yet it still says, thanks, John. That's because I've, we've creating a session for this user. So you, as long as you pass it over once, it's going to set that session. So for instance, if you use the REDIR equals one in your URL, it'll remove everything from the URL and set a session. So as they progress through the form, those values are still set and you can use them anywhere you want, uh, which is pretty cool um, within here. And you'll see that the PID stays the same. So if you're doing any type of, Again, API calls, uh, it's beautiful. So as they progress, you can do a lot of different things with that. Uh, so yeah, again, the, the format for that was just, what was that tab? It's just thank you. And again, I didn't have any of the parameters after that, but it still picked it up. Okay, so now on the lead view, again, one lead in here, but I'm in all forms, so I can submit, right? So if I was gonna do a special campaign or a special email, to people who, you know, made it to step three, I could do that. Um, you know, of course, I'm in all three of these. So I'm going to show up when I filter for all three, because I am in all three data forms. So that goes for two, if you're going to do like an email campaign or use the SMS campaign or whatever, you know, I'm associated with all those data forms. 
Um, so be mindful of that uh, because I am, you know, part of all three of those, right? And so it'll show you the progression of that. And of course, now it's going to pin that data. And then if you had a custom field set up with the exact name sales rep, of course, it'll show up here. Uh, and then you can up, update up here. Uh, by the way, my industry went through and you'll see here, I use this prior to our call as a session, uh, just to kind of test out a few things, um, uh, passing over different characters and different variables. So it even passed over a session that I had, you know, for the industry that I was in. It's obviously encrypted when it comes from, you know, uh, uh, the source that I was testing with it. So that's really cool. Again, creates that session as you progress, so we'll update that data. So did all that make sense? Um, does anybody have any questions for that before I kind of go through? Uh, when will data forms map to lead details? Yeah, so I, I was just covering that. And here's an example. I'm, I'll spend some time on that just so we have some clarity with it. So basically, if you come over here to data fields, and if I wanted to map, let's say, um, well, let's just do sales rep. So I'm going to do sales rep. And then I'm going to do type leads. I'm going to do input type text. I'm going to hit add. So now my sales rep field is going to show up in my leads view. Not only that, it's a column I could actually put in too as well. By the way, if you're not, if you didn't know this, you can reorder these and this saves. And I just released, and I, this was part of that release. And I forgot it was in there. Uh, actually, it's by campaign. I mean, by workspace now. So you can have different columns set by workspace. Before it was like I set my columns, my order of my columns. It was basically always like that for all my workspaces, which is not good if you have you know multiple workspaces with different columns and you know it just gets confusing that way. So now it actually saves based on workspace. In addition, you can click on this column here and you can put in you know, whatever columns you want or turn off whatever columns. So if you're not familiar with that, it's just right over here, click on columns. And now this is saved by workspaces. So you could have, you know, several different workspaces with different data fields and, and elite custom fields and all that's in here. Also, when you export now, it, it this has been out for a little while, but when you export, it pulls all your custom fields and everything else in your, in your export uh, with the system itself. Okay, so now I have my custom field set up. And I go into my lead, you're going to see sales rep here. Now, one thing on the data fields, you can also group them. And I have a new UI design coming out for this grouping where you click the plus or minus button and it'll expand here, including here as well. But if you group them, you know, name whatever input type, uh, I'm sorry, not input type, group name, let's just call this uh, lead extra, whatever. So you can put that there. And then now it's going to group them as lead extra. So the new little UI update that I have coming for the leads view, this will be like toggle on and off so you can see it, uh, just so you can see like, you know, grouping, especially if you have a ton of different questions or if you're going to use like all your survey questions as custom fields, uh, you can do that. So now that I have that map like set up as sales rep, I named it exactly sales rep. So in my multi-step form, here, sales rep, that's all I have to do. I don't need to use this map to down here. This is only for global fields because sales rep is mapping is named exactly what I named on this data field sales rep. It's going to go ahead and map on its own. So if I were to go back to step three and I hit, you know, let's change it to Tom. So this is where it comes into some of the questions on the Facebook group and others have said, so you'll see right here that I've changed my answer from Jack to Tom. When I hit submit, if I were to go into the lead now, see how the sales rep is Jack? Well, it's gonna update that. Now it's gonna be Tom, All right? And you'll see that it maps to my custom field here. So my custom field is Tom here. So if I'm in here, here's Tom. So I've mapped to my custom field as much as I want. And now it's part of the lead edit section, everything. And the only way I, the reason why that worked is because I named it exactly what I named it on my data field. The map to only applies to these global variables because global fields, because you may not want to call it first name. You may want to call it, uh, I don't know, whatever. 
Um, you may want to call it F name. You want to, you may want to call it, you know, uh, main email address or phone, maybe mobile, whatever, you know, it's just, you may name your fields or good one would be company. You may want to name an organization opposed to company. So mapping to the global fields is important for our global fields because you're going to name them differently. However, when you create a custom field, you're only going to name it whatever you're going to name it. So just make sure you name it the same on your data form and on your data field. Uh, and that way, there you go. You're, you're good to go. Um, it maps to automatically. So you can see here. So one of the issues with this, and actually I didn't even think about this, but some have suggested, and there's actually a group chat about it with some, some reasons behind it, that you may want to see that they've updated and came back in and changed what they had, right? So in this case, instead of having just sales rep Tom, I would have sales rep twice because I would append the data opposed to replacing the data. Right now we're replacing the data. I didn't think about wanting to append the data. So that is gonna be an option in your data form. Uh, so you'll have a little checkbox that says, I wanna append my data when a lead comes back and resubmit. I guess a use case for that, if I recall, was I have uh, the same form and you may wanna go submit again, let's say for a ticket or like you know a request for something. You may submit that form multiple times uh, and check off, you know, sales or you know, marketing, VA or whatever. You may check off those options um, each time, and you don't like. For instance, if I were to go back and just check marketing, you would never know that I had I was interested in sales, VA, and recruitment because this would be replaced with marketing. So that's a great use case, and I didn't think about that. So that's coming as far as the data form to be able to hit and and be able to. Um, append the data opposed to replacing the data. But, you know, again, so you can see I come in twice to step three. So even though I've already part of step three, it's going to show again, I came in at 1156 and submitted uh, step three. Okay, um, let's see what else I missed. Yeah, I got it very easy. Look forward to if then logic training and docs. Yeah, for sure. And, and I, I'm going to pre apologize for that. Uh, that one will seem super confusing, but actually when you get it, it's it's awesome. Uh, and then I'm going to build into the CMS or to the builder, the ability to just go ahead and select the content block and then map that to your custom Git variable. So it does it for you. Right now it's actually done in the code level. Um, but again, once you kind of get past that and, and understand how that works and just applying a wrapper, it's actually pretty easy. So definitely next week, for sure gonna be the next training um, because there's a lot of people that would love that right now. Okay, this helps get to Cox turn in. I definitely attend the one where you're passing info with the session page by page and then can upsell the final transaction through Stripe. Beautiful, I'm actually, that's a great use case for the next training because a lot of people wanna do these upsells. You know, once you get in and add to cart, there's actually a lot of cool things you can do with Stripe out of the box, um, you know, and then trigger and add on you know, additional stuff on your next page. You can use these get variables exact same way and based on the value of those get variables, show a different upsell. Uh, so that would be a great one to show. Documentation is really critical. It will cut down on support requests and help users tremendously, absolutely. Hopefully this will just make you a little more dangerous. I know a lot of people complain about the ability to, you know, build a landing page. Um, you know, if you want to kind of sit here and, and watch me style this, you know, you can build a simple page out pretty quickly from blank, but like I said, more templates will solve all that for drag and drop and things. Like for instance, I could have made this a lot cooler, you know, within here if I would have just used the, um, you know, just kind of the already pre-built stuff, you know, within here, right? I could have had this just as my landing page and threw some images in here, threw a footer in there, and I already have myself a little survey form that I can send out to anybody, in, you know, a matter of minutes. I can drag over the header right to this and kind of build that out and go through there on that I probably should have done that so it doesn't look so janky can't stand the way it looks um but anyways hopefully this this kind of helps on that standpoint and yes definitely need documentation not related but our project status data fields working now can't seem to have different sets of project status which is badly needed for us Stephen, let me check after this it should be um addressed and i assume you're talking about different workspaces having different um, project statuses. And I, I believe you mentioned it when you're actually 
in the project, not the actual Kanban board when you're actually set after you set up a project, I assume. Uh, but I will get with you on that. I know there's a couple of things that you're looking for uh, that need to have taken care of. So could you please add some icons to the various uh, areas in Ligna data forms? So when you click on them, it pops up with the overlay window showing all the various variables you can use and add quick examples of them. So we, so yes, definitely. Again, this all comes back to just, you know, I have a decent sized dev team, but they are literally working on so many components to what we have coming up, upcoming. And now that we're past a lot of this stuff, all this UI, roadblocks that people get in could you imagine if the system was you know more intuitive like you're mentioning um of these things that are just buried in these hour long two hour long meetings that i have um you know it also goes back to like like different things that you can do with like modals and things and the you probably don't even know it but some of these themes have you know you could have your form part of your modal right you can just drop in your form code here so you could have this a pop-up form I mean, most people don't even know that, right? That like you can you can do that and have it, you know, pop up modal uh, within here, uh, things like that. So yeah, absolutely, I need to do a lot of that, you know, just throughout. So um, yeah, exactly. We use it for an ad campaign info, but it's same person submits multiple times over as previous campaigns. Also need to export raw contact form fields CFC. Um, yeah, so you can export the raw contact forms in the lead view. So yeah, perfect use case definitely coming for a toggle to be able to do that uh, but when you export here select your data form so a lot of people just select all based on their filter and then they export the problem with that this export here is it's not getting you data form details because you may have like there's multiple data forms here in this view so i got step one first step form import data so it's impossible to create a column that will cover everything, uh, especially if you have tons of data forms. You know, that'd be a significantly big CSV with all the columns out there and then just the data it has in there. I tried that initially and it just looked, it was a mess. Uh, not a big deal if you only have a couple of data forms, of course, but if you have a ton of data forms with tons of different data, uh, it's just very difficult uh, to do that. Not only that, as you loop through and create each record in the CSV, it's difficult to understand what column needs to be appended based on that and then match that to that. So it just became janky and I didn't like it. Um, so the way we have it now is if you don't select anything in here, uh, you just come over here to export and then now you can grab, you know, whatever data form that you have and export. And that will give you all the raw data that they've submitted uh, within here. So you can export all your leads. And this also includes all the global fields and your custom fields. So it'd be custom fields, global fields, and all of your data form fields for that data form uh, when you export that. But if you select anything here, it actually changes this export. So that export is different. It's not the data form export. The only way to get to the data form export is don't select any leads, just come right over here to export, select your data form, and that'll export all the raw data from the data form. Okay, so um, John, not related, but I have you had a chance to look at my 10 DLC registration. Uh, by the way, um, I have resubmitted. Carolyn, I'll look at yours. I did resubmit manually. Um, I'm doing this as a courtesy, by the way, because once you get denied, you know, there's a whole you got to pay again. You got to go through the whole process again. Uh, it's annoying and I hate it. Believe me, I wish this didn't exist. Um, and so I've, I've been doing it. Um, the only suggestion I can give everybody is that you, if you're doing it for yourself, for your own business, you know, it's, you're a technology provider. They're only asking for one or two examples, not all of your examples. So don't put anything about sales follow-ups or, you know, I'm, I'm following up with your submission and just making sure you're okay. You know, those kinds of things. Don't do any of that stuff. Do, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm, sending a notification to our users about upcoming events, about new feature functionality, about lead submission or lead notifications or, you know, project status update. Whether you're doing that or not, it's not asking for every example, just the ones that, you know, that makes the most sense. If this is for your client, you know, you, you would, I would definitely consult with them and explain to them that uh, anything that has to do with sales is getting rejected. Just so you know, I, I've seen it over and over and over again on the sales side of it if you're mentioning something about following up with someone who submitted a lead form on your website whether they're opt-in or not 
it, they're just denying it's ridiculous um so there's a lot of different ways that you can i guess consult with your client to change up the way they they do their description description is super important on the 10 dlc i know we're just completely trailing off here but when you set up your description for your 10 dlc make sure it's a a, a great description of what you plan on doing with text message and just be mindful if it's anything that has to do with sales follow-up or just cold marketing in general, you will not get approved. Um, so yes, I will definitely go out, uh, go after this call, just take a look. I, I manually submitted yours and rechanged it. Um, so hopefully we're, we're good there. Um, okay, so get your video transcript, slap them in. Yeah, I know, I need to do that for sure. Definitely need to do that. Uh, so I appreciate the recommendation. Are you going to roll out any automation for 10 DLC like automated in the website imports or is that too much? So the 10 DLC, yeah, I mean, there's other than me providing the sample questions that you, you're supposed to or answers there, you know, there's real no automation for that because first you got to set up your brand. Uh, a lot of people have mistake this on the brand. Um, you know, it's U.S., not United States. The brand name has to be exactly what you get back from the IRS. So when you submit to the IRS, they give you a little welcome message, you know, letter with, you know, your company name, your address, and your EIN number. All those have to match. It has to be exactly what you submitted, you know, pay sensitive, exactly what the IRS has, or your brand will not uh, get approved. Okay. So... Um, yeah, so the multi-step form, we do so many different way, things with this. Um, the next training, of course, is going to be, you know, more advanced as far as like showing data and, and logic that you can create. But once you get kind of mastered this, the next stage is, is going to be easier, you know, easier to learn than jumping into the more advanced stuff after it. But, you know, most important thing is just making sure that your next step here is proper. You know, as Javier said, you don't have to pass over all the data that I'm passing over. You could actually just pass over that email uh, and then that'll match because that's the only thing we match by email. One thing to note on that, though, uh, and I think I said this earlier, it's one email per workspace. So if you're in all workspaces, essentially what that is, is that, that if you set up a data form in all global, essentially what that means, it doesn't have a workspace. It's just zero for the workspace ID, right? And so in that case, as long as the data form that you're submitting to doesn't have a workspace, that email will match all the way throughout. The second you create a data form that's assigned to a workspace, now if that same email went through, it'll create a duplicate because it's per workspace. Uh, that's, again, um, by design and important, especially if you, you, know, you have a lead that you want to work in different workspaces uh, you know, obviously you're going to want a duplicate version of that. So duplicates exist in each workspace, outside of their workspace. Uh, just be mindful of that. Um, if you're trying to test this out and you're like, hey, it keeps creating a new lead here. You know, you may already have a lead in there and it's not appending. It's because it's not associated with the same workspace. Okay, cool. So the next part of this, I'm just going to kind of go through the ability to add our pixel and also an external data form. Now, I need to adjust a few things for you to be able to do this when you embed. Obviously, when you embed here, uh, this is not going to work on your server, on your site. You can obviously do this multi-step process, but these hidden fields and this stuff up here that's happening um, back here or wherever I was, you know, all this stuff here on the multi-step and here and using the get variables, that obviously is not gonna work on your system. This can only work on our funnels inside our platform. You can obviously redirect on your site and have multi-forms, but again, you're gonna to have to collect that email address and either do something on your side with JavaScript or just have the email on every form, just in case they, you know, not a big deal to have them have to revalidate their email address as they go through their step and progression. Uh, because even on external data forms, as long as the email matches, it'll merge together. Uh, but a lot of people miss a, the ability to track, you know, all this data that comes through and understand what they're doing on your site. This all exists on external data forms. So to do that, you're going to come over here to system, I'm sorry, settings, integrations, and then pixels. You're going to create a pixel. So just add a new one, put in your URL. This is, doesn't mean anything, by the way, this 
doesn't mean that it's not going to work on another URL. All it is is for you to understand where you're putting this pixel. Of course, add it to a workspace if you choose. Uh, and then you're going to embed it. So one of the problems that everyone has, and this is all me because this should be split up. This should be, you know, tracking pixel, data pixel is what it should be. And why I haven't done that yet, I, I don't know because this is a lot of problems that everyone has. This is two pixels. This is our tracking pixel. This is what will allow you to see tracking in the dashboard and also tracking from the lead itself. This part right here, so I, I'm sure everyone's seen enough embed scripts that this is not like, you know, foreign as far as when you look at it, um, but this may be just because of the way it's kind of set up. So this end script, so script, end script, that's one pixel. Then you have this script to here, it's the bottom part. If you're using our data forms on our on your website, so you've gone over here to this data form section, wherever the heck that is, and you've grabbed this code right here, and you put this on your website, and you went over here and you grabbed this whole thing and put it on your website, your data form won't show up. Uh, the reason why is because this part is for scraping data forms or forms that don't exist inside of your system. So basically, you you uh, you need to remove this if you're using our embed forms and only grab this. So again, this bottom part, just delete it. You don't need it. If you are not using our external data forms, you can still track the lead stuff, still see all the visits and everything else. However, you need to go through the mapping process for your data form, which you can do by just going inside here. I did a video back there as far as how to map this. Uh, it will require you to know the name values of each of the fields to get it to work. Uh, if you don't have like common names on your name fields, such as first name, last name, email, and phone. Some cases you may have got lucky and added your pixel and things are just flowing great for you. Um, but in other cases, like if you're using an Elementor form or, you know, some other form out there, you know, they, they don't, they create names that are different that are not easy for us to map. And so you have to use this mapping engine uh, for your pixel. But I've done a video on that. Um, I won't bog you down with that on this call. Uh, just because, again, there's um, there, there's a lot of different variables depending on your uh, data form. But again, the most important piece is you're going to grab this script here and not the second. Someday, hopefully in the near future, I wish it was already here. It's so simple to do and it's annoying. But this needs to be split up. So tracking pixel and then uh, data form pixel. Uh, so in order to, to get the progression bars from form step one, step two, step three, we need to create multiple pages for each data form for each step. Yeah, so, you know, you, there's tons of themes out there that have that, um, you know, kind of already designed for the multi-progression. Now, you, you can also, depending on your theme, and if you're in there, you know, these little progressions, you would just put your data form in each of those sections, right? Um, so you could do it that way. Now they have, instead of submit, it's like go to step two, go to step three. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that um, depending on your skill set. But yeah, the easiest way for everybody to do multi-step forms, you know, you would create your design inside the builder for each of these or use one of the templates that are back there. And each new page that you create, you would put that data form on so it progress. If you want that little, you know, slider to the next step progression, um, you could do that with JavaScript and some different elements. And of course, it would still go to the next page. You would just have the styles for step two, style for step three that makes that bar. So it's actually still going to the next page instead of just loading on the same page that you're at and just kind of progressing, which most you know form builders that you use are just embedding that in. So it's really kind of, you know, just kind of flowing in on your same site. And I don't know how many track the progression that way, but this is the easiest way to do it. And probably, you know, um, not a bad approach to kind of get that same flow. Yeah, so I definitely understand that you're looking for a smooth user experience. We certainly, I can certainly give you some examples that you can use, but like I said, I, I, I need to make it easier for anybody to be able to kind of leverage any kind of design they want. Loop data may be a great place for that. Uh, as Stephen said, uh, that may be the best way to do that. 
Um, yeah, I did show in the last video, but it won't be for any user to kind of do, by the way. Um, so for this, this is like the easiest way for everybody to have a multi-step form and use the system with the Git variables and everything else. The way I had that one set up, that's using JavaScript that's in there. And again, if you have the template, then you don't have to worry about setting your JavaScript. You just have to set your form fields um, associated with it. So I will get that over to you so you have an example of how to do that. But again, I it's definitely a, a more of an advanced approach of, of making that UI seamless. How do we get the embed script to bypass add cookie blockers to ensure it loads? Um, so I'm not sure. You got to give me an example of where that's happening for you. And I can take a look at how, how you can do that. But as far as like, you know, blocking the tracking, you know, they've, by default, we are creating a fingerprint that is used throughout. So unless you specifically put in block cookies on your site, you know, we're still tracking, obviously, uh, throughout that. So I definitely want to see, you know, an example of where you're seeing that the embed script is not loading, uh, you know, on that side of it on your side. So yeah, roadmap, I've updated everything. So new timelines, these are realistic timelines. I know prior to all the 10 DLC stuff, the usage system, and a lot of issues that came with like merging everything over, everything fell, you know, as far as timelines, obviously. I've readjusted, I've met with my dev team significantly last week, uh, reordered priorities based on the functionality that's back there, uh, reset our benchmarks, got everyone aligned as far as what we're releasing and, and pushing out. Now there's six or seven core functionality updates that are not on the roadmap that I have to put on there, um, including you know the, the email engine as far as like dunning up different um, blocks of emails based on your SMTP. There's a couple of other ish, uh, feature functionality like that uh, that I need to update that's on there. But as far as the timeline of all the functionality that's on there, that's about as accurate as we possibly can get. We spent a lot of time mapping what we're currently working on, what we need to do, how much, you know, the queue, I went through every functionality that's in QA and, and provided my notes and the timeline for that. So uh, that's the best roadmap that we have to date with real, <laughs> real timelines. Um, not that the other ones weren't real prior. It's just we had things pop up that were uh, 911 emergencies kind of stuff that set everything back. Uh, maybe we could share custom blocks apart from themes. So I would be happy to share um, the HTMX example. Yeah, that'd be cool. Others have asked that just to be able to use a custom block in another funnel instead of having to go in there and copy. You know, if you didn't know this, by the way, if you, you know, come into a block and select it, you can hit this little icon right here and that'll copy that code. And of course, you got to go into the other funnel. Uh, it'd be super cool to turn in one of your blocks to be able to use it in a repository and then share them across. So that uh, definitely is something that we need to implement for sure. So that's really all I got. I was actually one of those meetings where I've gone less than the two hours and then talk over. So uh, like I said, I'm happy to stay on and answer any questions you have about the system. You know, this is, again, a lot of people struggle with just getting a data form kind of set up. Hopefully there's some little nuggets in here that kind of get you on your way as far as what you need to do. And then also a better explanation of the Git variable system because you can use it in, in so many different ways, right? Especially on Facebook. Oh, um, let me go ahead and let me switch my share screen real quick. Uh, let me try to pull this up. Just to kind of talk through this, because I am going to share this document on some of the things that you can do. And I apologize, our landscapers out here just sounds like he's wanting to weed eat my house. Um, let me go ahead and share this text document. Okay, so I'm going to share this with everyone. This is, if you want to track Google and Facebook um, or any ad campaign that's out there, you know, this this little parameters here, again, we just kind of talked about this. It's the same kind of concept. This L Pearl tag, that's Google's tag. Uh, this campaign ID, this is Google's tag. This ad group ID, this is Google Google tag, keyword tag, creative tag. This is Facebook's tag. And right? so Facebook does a little bit different. You're just appending it to your URL that you send your ad. 
So you just need to put this inside your Facebook ad campaign at the bottom where it, where it talks about your, you know, just your Perl variables or whatever, uh, your additional variables for your URL. You would just grab this and throw that in. And this will actually show up for traffic on your paid on your dashboard, but more importantly, it'll track it all the way through your lead uh, on the system itself. Uh, you, of course, you're going to want to put your own industry in there. And then source could be, doesn't have to be Facebook underscore ads. It could be whatever you want. But this campaign ID, ad set ID, and creative ID, that's the ID for Facebook. And then these are the, the values, just to kind of give you a quick understanding of it. And then another example of that, uh, doing this in here. So again, you may have something else that you're doing that you want to track. So in your data form, you would create a hidden field called whatever you want to track. And then your URL that you're using for, you know, sending in it and, and whatever, um, email, text message, or just wherever, um, that variable that you send over, the value of it will track into your hidden field on your data form. So you can do some additional tracking there. But I'll share this and um, send this out just so you have it. But again, that's all, that's just for Google and Facebook. It's their pre-built stuff. That way, you know, if you want to track on a, on a standpoint. And then also, if you want to track conversions, I meant to, add, I meant to talk about this, and I apologize. So on conversions here, on your page, right? So as you progress to your thank you page, if you go over here to this tab and then click on settings for your page, you have a little embed tag embed section for your page itself. You also have it for the whole site. So if you come over here to the embed under settings, this is going to show up on every single page. So if you're going to do a Facebook pixel or you know your Google Tag Manager, you're going to throw that in here and that's going to be across your entire site. And then on your page, you're going to throw in your pixel to update success, right? Your conversion. So you put in, you know, whatever, whatever tag that you need to do to pass over your conversions for whatever system, whether it be Facebook or Google uh, or LinkedIn or whatever, that's on that final page or your thank you page, you would come into the page and click on embed and you put it here. Wherever the instructions are for whatever medium you're trying to track a conversion for, this is where you drop it. Some will be at the beginning of the body, some will be in the head, some will be at the end of the body. You don't want to put this in the builder anywhere in the builder. It needs to go in these embed sections because you don't want that loading in your builder uh, while you're working on it. Uh, so that's how you do the conversions. And then I also mentioned, and I probably sh should do a whole training on the style of this. This is more for advanced users, but you'll see like our data forms, they have like LI, UL, field set, and form. So that's our format for an LI. So if I were to go out to, let's just say Ligna, um, actually, I can go to, let's just say Salesforce. Oh, I don't know who this is. Oh, you know what? I know who that is saved in my stuff for some reason. Um, just trying to find a form on a site that maybe you want to mirror. Uh, let's see, form, they go to contact. I should have had this example because I said I was going to even talk about it and model it. Um, let me see here. Maybe there's a form here. Okay, so maybe I want to make my form kind of look like that. So to grab your form styles, my input here, so you have all these different styles here. So you would grab all these and then you would just go out to our data form. Again, this is 100% more, um, more advanced for CSS, but if you're building themes and clearly you're either trying to learn CSS, but you see how all ours are associated with this right here. So you can get the pre-built form that we have just hover over the element, grab that, and then replace what's in here with whatever form you want to style. So that's the easiest way of doing it, is just inspect the element, grab the styles that are existing here, go to whatever form that you have, right click, grab all the styles that are associated with it. These are all kind of split up, and this is a little more difficult to understand, but any of the ones that are turned on, you're gonna to wanna to grab and copy them, and then you're gonna come into ours, and you're going to wherever the heck I have this, and you're going to replace this with that. And then now your form field here will match exactly what whatever form you're trying to go through. So 
And Drew, hopefully that was uh, that made sense, and I need to do a video more specifically on that. So, so yeah, hopefully this was helpful. Again, if you have any other questions about you know anything system related or upcoming, feel free to uh, type those in, and I'll answer anything that you have. Am I missing questions here? Okay, I got everything. Okay, so at any rate, I appreciate everyone. Um, I'll have some updates coming out, hopefully uh, tomorrow and Saturday. Just some, they're smaller, but they're, some of them are pretty cool. Uh, so I'll have a couple of those come out. Um, oh, so there's one that came in here. How do we manage cookies in, in Ligna? Uh, EU, UK, we must give the option to accept or deny cookies that include tracking codes. Right, if you just go out, matter of fact, if you just go out to Ligna, um, you're you're happy. You're happy to use this. I don't, it's up to you if you want. But there's a there's tons of copy out there. Hold on, where's our um... okay? So I have this. It's I'll send it out, but if you want to use ours, you can use ours. Um, it's, you know, it's just a little plugin that pops up at the bottom, uh, but you can go and get any, any of them out there. There's tons of little cookie scripts that you can use to make yourself in compliant. And you, again, now inside the data, inside your actual funnel, click on settings right here, go into your embed and drop that into the head, begin to the body or end. That'll allow you to have that cookie, you know, throughout. So what happens with our tracking system, if you do have disabled cookie option in there and they actually click that, that'll disable the tracking on our system. Our system's already GDPR compliant. It follows all of that. So, yeah, however, it doesn't turn off unless you have your own cookie option. All right, I should just make one that everyone can turn on to their funnel and turn it off and kind of customize. Uh, but there's just so many that allow you it's just very easy to do that um, online. There's free ones, there's paid ones. Um, so so it won't, they will not affect the forms at all. So they'll still be able to submit their data, but it will prevent this. You won't see this. So you won't see any of the stuff that they looked at prior to them giving the data. So the form will still work. Uh, it won't prevent the form from working. It'll just prevent us tracking all this data. Um, you know, this stuff, there's a lot that goes into this tracking and if by device too, and it doesn't have to be the same IP address. We have a lot of logic that comes back and shows that this fingerprint was from this user. And, you know, it could be months later, you, you, a whole, uh, they could clear their cache, clear a lot of stuff. There's a, they have to go to a full extent to kind of get rid of this, which is kind of scary too, uh, in some degree. But it's it's cool because you know this really allows you to leverage some of the other stuff. Like right now, I'm I've come back to the site, so this is a sales feed. You know, as far as my follow up, um, well, actually, this this is not that. Sorry, but you would see a lead visit here. You know, as soon as I leave this session and come back, close out on my browser and come back, I'll show up in my sales feed here. And you can also do workflows uh, within that. So if you have that cookie banner on your site. Uh, to to disable cookies, you'll lose that ability uh, for them to do that. But they have to click it. They have to deny deny cookies uh, for it. So, yeah. And by the way, let me let me re clarify that. Now that I reread your stuff. This is not try. This is not cookie. By the way. All this stuff that's being done here, this is not cookie tracking. We don't install cookies for this. Actually, we do. By the way, there is a cookie. So if you come in here, ah, that's a great point. Now that I understand. See these cookies? They're all encrypted, by the way. So everything is encrypted. All those cookies have been set. If you disable cookies, all this still works because we use server sessions. The only disadvantage of that is your session is only going to last 29 minutes. 
So basically 30 minutes. So if your user sits for more than 30 minutes and then comes back, it's a whole new session that's happening. So they'll lose the progression. It'll redirect them, obviously, if you have it set up uh, in a way that needs to have that ability for that. So if they disable cookies, all this still works. You just, again, this is all done by service session, which that has nothing to do with cookies. You prevent all that, I'm still able to track based on the server um, session within, within the server itself. And that, so we're using three different elements here, which is actually pretty cool. So the get parameters in your URL from your form, right? So all this stuff up here, we're tracking it in three different ways. One, we're tracking it just based on what the value is up here. So we're able to pull this value simply because it's in the URL. So that's one. Secondly, we're doing a server session. So we set a session for every single one of these so we can reuse it down the line um, at the server level. And then we set a cookie session. So in the storage, we're setting a cookie session. And so what happens is we first check the cookie session. If the cookie session exists, we're gonna use that value. If no cookie session, let's check the server session. If that session exists, uh, then we'll use that, right? So, uh, so would it be a good idea to include all the hidden fields in every step? So we'd be able to pass it over to the next step, even if it is a session timeout. So I, yeah, if you wanna do that, but it doesn't matter. As long as you have email, we've already collected the first step data and all we need is email. So by the way, that's another point to where even if the session times out, this value is forever set here on this page. So as long as they submit the next step, it's gonna pass again that email over. So yeah, the email is what's matching it. So you don't need to pass all that data over that I was passing over to Javier's point, unless you wanted to use it on the thank you page like I did, like you wanted to personalize the thank you page with their name and info like that, right? So. Yeah, so as far as being GDPR compliant, this is 100% supports that. Uh, your cookie sessions are in encrypted. In addition to that, if you disable cookies, um, that won't be there, but we still use a session and we also set the value as soon as you get there. Uh, so it'll pass over, even if you're timed out on your session, if they sit on your form for more than 30 minutes. I hope that made sense. All right, well, that's all I got. I appreciate everyone very much. Uh, if you think of anything after this, uh, please let me know. Like I said, this is recorded and I'll load this up uh, to YouTube and also send it out to the team. So um, yeah. And one final note, I'm all for collaboration meetings. I'm happy to attend those. This summer is, is actually really good for me because, you know, I'm, I'm spending less, need, you know, less time needing to be like be in the full blown development stuff. Uh, you know, my, my dev team has, you know, again, the timelines and our roadmap. There's a couple of things I'm personally still working on and enhancing. And of course, obviously I'm engaged with everyone. So a lot of my time's taken up with that, but at the end of the day, I, I, I do think there's just so much opportunity as far as like more training and more understanding and more use cases and how you leverage Ligna in a better way. Uh, but that also doesn't have me involved in that collaboration. I would uh, certainly like to just be able to support that uh, and then obviously have my trainings um, that are more tailored towards, you know, very specific use cases. So um, looking forward to those, and and I, I really appreciate everyone. I hope you have an awesome rest of your weekend, or rest of the week, and awesome weekend. So thank you, appreciate it.